How's it guys? It's Dark Soul Ryu saying we are back for part 18 of the Pokemon Yellow playthrough. So, um, we just uh, finished Slifco, and now we're gonna go ahead and uh, accordingly get the gym, the next gym we need to get, before we can finally head off to Cinnabar Island. But actually, while I'm go ahead and uh, rearrange my item inventory, on that note, before we actually get to Cinnabar Island, there's two more routes that we could take over there. Actually, I take that back. There's two routes that you can go to, of course, but only one of them is actually going to let you get to Cinnabar Island because... Now, let me tell you, it was really strange for me, also kind of cryptic, when I was a kid, is that you actually have to go back to Pallet Town and surf down from there. Yeah, that one gap of water, you actually have to use that to get to the, um, the seventh gym. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and take care of the 6th gym. And, of course, with two new routes to uh, take on. I think I, um, I believe I take it on in one part. So we're going to uh, go ahead and have another um, sped up um, overlaying music segment for the training. So I hope you guys could um, uh, come back in for that and enjoy some of the music while um, just watching us slowly progress. <laughs> Now, you'll actually notice, again, that there is actually two buildings with the title Gym on them. The first one being the False Gym, and the second one being the Current Gym. This gym used to be a fighting gym and naturally got its butt handed to it by the Psychic types, because, well, it's anything but fighting, and Psychic is super effective against said, fight or said Psychic. Now, more levels all be worth it in the end. Now. For beating this um, place, this uh, pseudo gym, you get an optional uh, choice, or sorry, an optional pick of one of two. I want to say signature, but two specific fighting Pokemon. You can get either Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan. Um, neither of them are particularly anything special. Although if I had to choose either one of them, it would be the Hitmonlee because it's um, a fast fighting Pokemon. Not nearly as fast as Primate, but um, at the same time, Hitmonlee probably has more attack power to it. So I guess you can have more. I guess you could say it has more kick. All right, I'm sorry. That was a um, almost a Chuka Conroy level uh, pun right there. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry. I'm allowed one once in a while. And next we have the um, Hitmonchan, the uh, punchy Pokemon. It has an advantage of potentially learning all of the or the three elemental punches. It's the more defensive of the two, but to me, it makes its stats too far or not too far, but too much of a um, trying to please all the stats. That uh, too much of a jack of all trades. It's not going to master any particular one thing, so it rather lacks. The reason you might want to actually pick one up for your playthrough if you ever went ahead and uh, done this. Um, is that for whatever reason, although not nearly as bad as bug type moves, uh, fighting moves can be rather hard to get. Um, the reason as I say that is because the only access to fighting moves that you could potentially teach to a Pokemon are is probably submission, and you're gonna have to go ahead and pick that up in the um, Celadon City Mega Mart. But aside from that, we come to the, um, the leader. He's nothing special. He doesn't even have his own unique sprite. You just fight all these uh, these uh, five or six fighters. And there's the Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan he's going to use on his team. Nothing particularly special. But the only other uh, fighting type move you could probably get is hopefully a, a Pokemon can learn the submission move, which is an okay move to be sure. But um, the only other way you're going to get a potential fighting move to be learned by a Pokemon, uh, especially for early on, uh, is possibly by catching a Mankey. Which you can very early on is to the left of Vermilion City. And um, on the way to the Indigo League, I just show them off. They're right here. I'm not gonna. I actually, yeah, I go ahead and take it because why not? And then Hitmonchan's gonna be the next one. Now we can finally take on the Psychic Gym. Now this place is full of just war panels. It's a bit of a puzzle, yeah. I had a really hard time when I was a kid, but I know the right, the correct um, patterns to take. However, of course, since we need to get um, as much experience as possible, or slightly advisable, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm actually going to intentionally try to get to every square. I think I skip one, because I do. I, I take one path and I actually end up at Sabrina. I was like, you know what, just forget it. I'm going to fight. I'll just fight her now. Um, so, you know, you can pick up a Mankey, get a Primate. Primate's not too bad, because again, it is a very fast fighting type Pokemon. 
That being said, there are other fighting type Pokemon that pack more of a punch. And, you know, later on, if you wanted to, you could hold out and uh, possibly, like, say, catch Butterfree, make it to a Caterpie, and then beat Brock that way, uh, because his Rock Pokemon are going to be weak to the fighting moves of the Mankey. Aside from that, that's also one of the reasons why I actually go ahead and keep, even though I could easily teach Substitute to Brandon, being a Nido King and all. I actually go ahead and I keep the double kick just in case. Not to mention that um, moves that work like that and are successive attacks, if any, or sorry, if the first hit counts as a critical hit, all of the other attacks following it count as critical hit damage. So, um, you'd be surprised actually. I, I think I've been actually been overlooked even by myself. Moves that actually hit more than once in a given uh, move in itself. So, yes, this uh, Psychic Gem. It's actually going to have Psychic Pokemon in it. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a while. Of uh, the gym actually containing Pokemon of its desired type. However, it is going to try and um, mess around with you by having some Slowpoke, which are Psychic Water. That being said, we have Gigaton, so that's not too much of a problem. Uh, the Psychic Pokemon are going to be the Slowpoke, the Slowbro, which are very tanky, especially in the special sense. And Mr. Mimes, of course. And then the Abra family, Abra, Kadabra, Alakazam. Um, I'm actually surprised I didn't see any Jinx, and um, I just remembered another exception to the rule. Unfortunately, I Gigaton knocks himself out there. Another exception to this, uh, to the rule of the gym's Pokemon, is that it actually has um, some channelers in it, and some of the channelers will actually have uh, Haunter or Gastly. There's only one or two of them, so it's not nearly as bad as some of the other gyms. I'm so looking at Koga's gym. Yeah, these, um, they shouldn't be too bad. If you've been leveling up your Pokemon and honestly taking on a lot of the, almost all of the trainers like I have, you should be high enough level to where these, at least the grunts for the gym, shouldn't be too much of a problem, even if they have a Kadabra. Granted, of course, if they hit, you know, it is going to hurt a bit. There's one of the Haunters. Now, Sabrina's team. Oh, <laughs> well, of course, we'll get to her in detail when we get to her, but let me tell you right now. Um... You really need to... She's not so much of a problem in the RNG because I'm pretty sure one of her... The Pokemon in her team actually knows Hypnosis. And that's not so much the problem. Again, it's just... There's Psychic Pokemon and this is Gen 1 with Psychic Pokemon. Do I need to say more? You know, their special is really high. And that alone is really scary. So if anything hits you, unless you have a very well upkept and leveled up tank is probably going to fall in two shots. So some of her Pokemon might actually be able to do that. So don't feel too bad, considering the level jump for her team is actually pretty high too. Um, so here's another Channeler. I just go ahead and I spread the um, experience around a little bit. I don't always focus on the whichever uh, one of the team members will actually have the best um, matchup for uh, attack, attack type to Pokemon type. Eric could go ahead and learn Skullbash there, but even though Skullbash is tiny, uh, it's a tiny bit improved in later generations, it's a two-phase attack that doesn't offer anything. And like I said, even in the further generations, it's just not worth it. it there are much better normal type moves that I could honestly give Eric. I would rather give Eric strength than Skullbash. Now, what I say in the future is that they do fix that up, is that um, for Skullbash in the future generations, I'm not entirely sure when exactly, but I do know this does occur at least by Gen 4. Skullbash is that when he lowers his head, he doesn't just do that and nothing happens. He actually gets um, one uh, stage up in defense. And of course loses it when he attacks in the subsequent turn. So yeah, these these panels were really annoying as a kid. Um, <laughs> if you just wanted to, especially if you had any of the ideas of just getting in and fighting only necessary um, battles and then just fighting the gym leader. But that's totally fine. You know, I find in uh, RPG, especially like RPG, especially like this, and I'm saying with uh, kind of like with Paper Mario. Although I can honestly get away with it more in Paper Mario, if you're more familiar with it, with um, Pokemon in this case, uh, it's probably just better to uh, uh, fight all the gym trainers, unless of course you're using like maybe you're solo running with one Pokemon, or maybe two, or even three. But after four, especially with us like five, and yeah, you really probably want to go ahead and fight all, do all the grunts, <clears throat> do all the grunt work and fight all the grunts and get all the experience you can because as you'll see, it really pays off if we successfully pull off having a five party uh, team and complete the game with it. 
I believe here is what I'm actually going to go ahead and try and find the way to that, to that one grunt, but actually, um, after this one, I believe, we actually, um, I stumble upon, uh, Sabrina's room, and that's why I just decided to go ahead and just, uh, go ahead and find her though. There. Ugh. What's wrong with me today? Oh yes, the very defensive Slowbro. I'll have to admit that, um, I do kind of feel that that... Earthquake should have knocked it out, but th that's fine. Yep, there we go. So I decided to go ahead and fight her. Just, um, heal up everybody who needs to be healed up. Gigaton especially. This is gonna be a shorter part than normal, especially considering the last few uh, videos. But that's fine, I feel some of the more, um, focused videos, uh, tend to go off a little bit better, too, in their own way. So alright, now for another boss fight, I'm going to go ahead and turn to normal speed and we finally take on the 6th gym leader, Sabrina. Now Pokemon Yellow, she has only 3 Pokemon and it is the Abra family in its entirety. They're all level 50, that is really high to be sure. Especially when you're staring down a level 50 Alakazam. So what you need to realize is that it's probably going to get one shot off and it is going to hurt because it's an Alakazam. But you just need to keep it up, you know, just keep, if you can, a so, couple of strategies you could probably use is just keep on it and just keep whittling away. Using physical attacks will help the most. If you have a bunch of special Pokemon, honestly, like I do, like Brandon's the only real physical attacker we have. Eric is a mixed attacker, so he does have some physical attacks on his side. But you see me here, I'm just going to go ahead and use Gigaton to cause major problems for these, um, the Aberrant Cadaver and Alakazam. I'm going to paralyze them, and I'm going to confuse them, which is also commonly known as parafusion in the Pokemon community, even if you just watch it. And just make things harder for them. Now, I've noticed something about her team. It really likes to try and mess with your accuracy, which I, which is honestly fine with me, because one stat uh, drain of, uh, of accuracy isn't too bad. Of course, uh, if it starts piling up on you, it's going to be a problem, but again, that's also why you paralyze them. And another thing is, is that if they're spending their time trying to lower your accuracy, Kinesis apparently has seemed to hit more often than not also, which is again fine with me. And once in a while I did find this a little bit shocking. She actually uses an X item. I thought she would use an X special, but she actually seems to be more defensive in this version, which doesn't suit her team at all. It probably should be just hard on, uh, glass cannon, very fast hard hitters. Um, yeah, that move right there, yes. Her, um, I'm not sure about the Abra. Because I don't think you can learn only a couple of moves. The Abra, uh, or sorry, the Kadabra and the Alakazam carry uh, recover. So that's another reason to have paralysis to try and make sure that they they they're paralyzed and they don't pull it off. Thankfully, her Kadabra hurts itself here a couple of times before it can do that. I not entirely sure. I think we'll see, but I think her her Alakazam tries it a couple of times. There's Kinesis. It's just trying to mess around. It's no different than a. Uh, Sand attack, but all the same, they start piling up. And yeah, so let's see how this um, psychic works for her. Yeah. And my special falls, which isn't a good thing. Now, thankfully, I have the physical attack option on Gigaton. I always want to keep one anyway, even though it's not uh, specially physically attack based. It's always good to have that for reasons like this, and of course for ground Pokemon if I absolutely need to. Okay, level 50 Alakazam. <laughs> you see, I actually go ahead and use our uh, flying HM user, Poke, uh, Pidgeotto. This is totally for a heal move. Poor thing. <laughs> it, really, it really deserves a medal <laughs> for going out there and taking all the hits. Now, look at how terrible this move Psywave is. It doesn't do... It does a damage based on a calculation that's really overcomplicated. Um, I may just flash it up on the screen, I may not, but it's really overly complicated even by today's standards. And there's no way this poor thing is taking this psychic and living. <laughs> oh, Pidgeot, though. I still love Pidgeot, of course. When I got my Pidgey and Pidgey, or my Pidgey, I evolved it to Pidgeot and actually used it on my team. This is like one of my. This is when we were during my first runs of the game. Alright, very good. We have it paralyzed. Now for a little added bonus, let's see if we can try to confuse it. And we do! You know, I, got, I have to say, you know. The RNG has been pretty good for me hit-wise, especially with moves like Supersonic and Hypnosis. Um, at the same time, as far as Hypnosis is concerned, I've also been getting a lot of one-turn wake-ups as well, so I suppose that balances it out. I believe it, docks, it falls out of confusion again <laughs> as well pretty soon, so I go ahead and I uh, confuse it again. And thankfully, it is hitting itself a couple of times here. So that's always good. 
I'll throw Kate out here also to get some experience from it, but um, hopefully to try and take it out with Dig. I would use Amber, but of course, uh, or sorry, I use Hyper Beam. I love the animation. And oh my goodness, do you see this? It held on using Sturdy, the non-existent Sturdy, I might add. Oh. And you got a Psychic off. Yeah, and a Special Fall. Are you kidding me? Well, I have to recharge, but thankfully it gets paralyzed, and special- uh, sorry, Quick Attack comes in handy. So yes, that was a close call, but K pulled it through for us, and gets some experience on top of it. And that's Sabrina. Not too, too bad. Um, not bad at all, by any standards, considering how this all went. Okay, and with that, we've actually finished the part. She gives us the move for Psy Wave. This is easily, hands down, the worst TM you could be given by a gym leader. It's so terrible. <laughs> the damage is so little. If that level 50 Alakazam couldn't even do, like, what? What would it do? Maybe 2, 3 damage? On my level 32 Pidgeotto. Really? This is not a good move. Anyway, uh, we've come to the end of the video. Again, like I say, it's a short one, but... Um, Short and clear to the point. We're going to go ahead and do a more fast, uh, sped up um, training with music over it in the next few uh, part, or parts. And with that, I will see you guys later after I heal up in the Pokemon Center. We will head to Pallet Town and head down from there. Oh, sorry, no, I take it back. We're going to Fuchsia City, then we're going to go down to the Seafoam Islands, then we go to Pallet Town. Alright, see you then.